Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Corman. Jesse Nielsen here with a breakdown of the action in today's session, where we saw losses across the board and software getting hit particularly hard today, Justin. Yeah, it, it was a little bit of an ugly day all around, but we'll go ahead and focus on a few stocks today, uh, including post holdings, uh, see how the consumer staples are doing. Also, the solar stocks, Invesco yeah. Solar, the ETF there, we'll take a look at TAN. And uh, we'll end on a little bit of a positive note, uh, <laughs> something that's possibly setting up in the medical area, neurocrine biosciences. All right, we'll do that. But first, let's take a look at the major indexes. So the Nasdaq today finishing down almost 1% by sessions close. Same for the S&P 500. We get the Dow down some six tenths of a percent, the Russell 2000 down four tenths of a percent. So two down days here in a row for the Nasdaq after it hit resistance right at that 50 day line. Yeah, so I mean, this was the this was kind of what we were afraid of, right? Uh, it, it's you know, let's not get too excited. Um, it's one of those cases where, okay, maybe you you sprained your ankle and you're like, hey, I think I'm okay. Let me just try walking on it, and then you end up doing a little bit more damage. So uh, it kind of feels like that's what's going on with the market. That doesn't mean it's going to be down for the count for. Uh, necessarily a long time here or even go to new lows, mm -hmm. but it is kind of giving a signal. I'm not ready yet. And uh, we, we definitely saw that in a lot of the stocks that we've been seeing with breakouts. It just kind yes. of reiterates how breakout failures are very prevalent right now. Uh, so you have to be very careful. And I think more than anything, it underscores the reason to have light exposure right now, to be going in with pilot positions and to be taking profits quickly when you've got them. Mm -hmm. And don't buy those breakouts. Go, <laughs> right. with, an, go with an early entry if you can. Yeah. Whenever possible. Yeah. Yes, whenever possible. All right, let's uh, quickly take a look at the NASDAQ on the weekly just to see the prevailing trend. Pretty obvious. Like you said, on the positive side, we haven't made a new low yet, uh, mm -hmm. but we are hitting that resistance at the 10 week line. We'll also take a look at the S&P 500, which did not make it up to its right. 50 day line but is struggling to hold the 21 day and uh, didn't even quite get up to its highs from late June. Similar story here for the Dow now uh, firmly back below its 21 day line. And the Russell 2000 is tracked by the IWM ETF, uh, not quite up to the 50 day, but uh, hit resistance right around that 10 week line as well. So we're all continuing to uh, trend lower here but as you said, we don't yet know if we're going to see that chop and slop from here. We may not make necessarily make a new low, but we could. And there is one scenario that we have uh, modeled out that could send the NASDAQ uh, down as far as 10,000 potentially. Yeah, I mean, if you just kind of look at the overall trend, long term trend, and I'm talking, you know, over a decade, uh, then you could you could easily see it come down to that level. And it would be fairly normal. Uh, David Ryan has also mentioned a number of times where just looking at kind of, you know, a, a logical area for it to come down to would be kind of the highs that we saw back in pre-COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So that that kind of sets a level. So you've got you've got some reasons to think that that wouldn't be an unusual level to reach. Um, you know, just under 10,000, a little test of that 10,000 level. Uh, so yeah, it, it's completely feasible. Now, that doesn't mean it's gonna happen, right? You know, right. that's just one kind of model. And so it's it's a little tough right now. I feel like uh, you you can go short, but if, if, you're, if you're just a little bit late on the short side, you're probably okay. gonna be getting run in. And if you're a little bit late on the long side, you're probably going to be selling for a loss. So I, again, I feel like this is just one of those times where it's better to be patient on the sidelines as much as possible, having large cash positions um, and really kind of saving your mental capital because you yeah. can be doing a lot of work right now. And then at the end of the day, you look and see, okay, what, what are the fruits of my labor? And there's just mm -hmm. nothing there. So, um, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta plant in good soil and this is not good soil to be planting in right now. It is not. And and you mentioned shorts and being laser focused on entries there uh, because uh, a lot of the better shorting opportunities may be earlier in the year. So sure. if you go with shorts now, uh, they, they're probably going to be short shorts. Yeah, short exactly. time frame. And I'll be honest, I, I don't really hold any of my short positions for a very long period of time. I'm usually, um, you know, 
most of my money has been on the long side and most of the traders that I know that have been very successful, their money has been made on the long side, over 95% of their <laughs> profits. So, yeah, uh, you know, no while doubt. I might dabble in it, it's it's not something that I'm, I'm going to do in a big way. Uh, yeah. Usually it's just one of those things to stay engaged, yeah. to, to see if my, my timing is on, to see if my, my analysis is correct. Um, but again, with, with this market, especially, you know, as, as, as we've, we've been calling it, and I know it's not that appetizing, but chop and slop, you know, it's, it's just really easy to get chopped up on both yeah. sides. And that yeah. can just really make your mental capital get depleted because, again, you're putting in all this work, you're not seeing progress. And right now, there's just not a trend. You're, you're, you're up for a few days. And as soon as you see that strength, it turns around. But you know, the, 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 the downturn isn't lasting that long right now. You, you get a few days of a downturn and then you're kind of back up. And um, that, that's just really hard when you're not getting a trend, when you're getting this rotation back and forth. Um, that, that, that's not for a, a good environment mm -hmm. to be making money in. Mm -hmm. And as you said, uh, we need to make sure that we keep that powder dry for when conditions yeah. are in our favor. Because as we know, when we get into that power trend type environment, with a rising 21 day above a rising 50 day and the action happening above that, that's when we know we can start to be more aggressive and, th and that's where the real money is made. Right. And, and that's why we're optimistic, you know, even when things look ugly right now um, and, and they could get uglier, but that doesn't necessarily do anything to our optimism because we know that with these mm -hmm. bear markets and these corrections, kind of the, the worse they get, the bigger the bounces. It's yeah. like Newton's law, uh, <laughs> right? You know, that, that opposite and equal reaction. So you do tend to get some of your best and strongest markets after you've had these bear markets and these corrections. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem has been that we haven't had too many setups. Now, we were starting to see them in medical, but then, mm -hmm. you know, some of those started getting into a little bit of trouble. So we haven't seen a lot of setups. We still have a lot of stocks below their 50-day lines, below their 200-day lines. And so, again, just like a broken leg, you might need a little bit more time here to do some healing um, before you, you put too much weight on it. Mm -hmm. Great thoughts there, Justin. Let's also take a look at the 10-year Treasury yield, 0T in X, uh, down but off lows just under that 3% mark. Yeah, and even this has uh, been hard to trade, Getting right? Around. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, it's 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 up for a few days, then down for a few days, and you know, you would think, well, gosh, the Fed is going to raise rates. Isn't this easy? The yields are going to go up. They're going to be taking, you know, they're going to shrink their balance sheet. All of these things, but um, you know, there's there's multiple factors at play here. You've got the strength of the dollar. You've also got, uh, you know, a flight to safety which means people are buying bonds, which is going to send the yield down. So, mm -hmm. you know, the TBT, I mean, uh, TNX here, which is the, the yield, um, is going opposite in the way of the bond prices. So there's just a lot to kind of unpack here. And mm -hmm. I, again, the bottom line is that we're just not seeing things trend for very long. And that makes it very difficult to make any money. That it does. And among sectors, let's check in XLU. So utilities uh, reversing lower today down by about a half a percent, Justin. Yeah. And a lot of times you look at utilities and think, OK, well, this is the place for me to hide. Well, right now, it just seems like cash is the place to hide because, you know, we saw this before with utilities where it was looking like it was setting up in late May and then failed miserably, um, looked like it was having a strong bounce in, in June here. And then here we are back below the 50 day moving average mm -hmm. line, shifting over to XLP, you know, the, that's the consumer staples. And while some of these are doing a little bit better than others, um, you know, look at that, look at that day on May 18th. Um, that was such a dramatic drop, you know, for for the staples. These are the things that are considered safe, right? Right. And you saw, you know, Hershey's. You saw a lot of these things that normally don't move very much really plummet. And it just kind of reinforces that idea that there, there's no such thing as safe in the stock market. There might yeah. be safer, but it, there's no such thing as safe. And so, again, when you're getting into this volatile market, uh, you really have to be very careful and, and cash could be could be much better there. Um, we also let's go ahead and take a look at IGV just mm -hmm. to kind of get a sense of the software destruction that we saw today. Um, this was down four percent. And this is an ETF that is covering the software sector. So, you know, here again, we're seeing that there was a lot of bottom fishing 
that was leading this rally higher. And while it can be exciting to see the indexes up a lot, a lot of it was coming from some of the most beaten down stocks. I'm talking stocks down more than 75, 80 percent. And then you also had the China names that were also kind of leading the charge. Um, and, and certainly mm -hmm. the fines against Alibaba, while not large, uh, were enough to kind of, I think, spook investors and, you know, just just kind of reiterate that, hey, it's it's not it's not smooth sailing yet. It's not. OK. And let's talk about post holding. So speaking of Hershey Campbell's, this is another food package stock. It looks like it fared a little bit better on May 18th, still took a hit of more than 5% that day. It went on to build a base and it's trying to move out of a little bit of a tightened up range, did back off by the end of the day uh, by about 1.4%. Yeah. And here's the reminder that Bill O'Neill, uh, the, the, the founder of Investors Business Daily, wrote numerous times in numerous books, the loud warning to the wise. You know, he went through this whole idea of chart patterns, which you can look at this and say, hey, here's a good chart pattern. But his loud warning to the wise was a lot of this will not work in bear markets. And we are definitely in a bear market. Uh, mm -hmm. One other thing, you know, so not only do you have to be very suspicious of patterns in bear markets and be very careful with them, but also just take a look at the weekly chart. And you can see that this is not a stock that tends to outperform the S&P 500. So while it is right now, you see that relative strength line kind of, you know, going higher. And most of that is because it hasn't gone down like the markets have, mm -hmm. uh, this isn't one that tends to move that much. So to me, the risk here is, you know, you've got the risk of a bear market. You've got, you know, those May 18th days out there, even in these safe stocks and your return isn't necessarily going to be that great. So if I'm going to risk my money, I want to make sure I'm risking it for some potential bigger rewards. And okay. I just don't think that Post and a lot of these defensive names are going to give that mm -hmm. to you. So uh, instead of trying to think of how can I make money in this market and how can I keep up with inflation, because, yeah. you know, that's on a lot of people's minds, um, it, it should be more about how can I protect my capital? Yes. How can I make sure I'm losing the least amount possible in this bear market? Right. Sitting out now to potentially outperform when we Absolutely. do get uh, conditions more in our favor. It's such a great reminder because we have a lot of uh, customers uh, asking us all the time about these defensive stocks. And uh, another thing to point out is uh, just to reiterate is that even if they are leading now, I mean, hey, RS rating of 95, like you said, that short term relative strength looking good, but are these really going to be the kinds of stocks that are going to lead and charge ahead in the next big rally? And if your uh, if capital is tied up in these kinds of stocks, it's going to be hard to shift gears when we do get a setups that are more in our style. Right. We're definitely, uh, we tend to be more on the growth side, right? And, you know, that's not to discount the fact that we had a phenomenal rally in a lot of commodities this year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it does seem like a lot of those commodity plays have gotten into trouble as of late. And so mm -hmm. uh, that kind of leaves you with, well, where is the leadership? <laughs> and I think um, we're, we're still kind of trying to decipher that. While medical does have some promise, um, it's, it's, not, it's not quite smooth sailing yet. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look at TAN because in addition to software, solar stocks took it on the chin today. So the TAN ETF down about 3.3% and above average volume. It was looking uh, like it was it was setting up nicely here, Justin, got above the 200-day line, closed above it, but that has uh, turned into a resistance level, and at least for now, it's range-bound. Yeah. And so, you know, I'll just kind of share what we did on Swing Trader. We did put the this on Swing Trader, um, you know, as it was showing strength coming up above that, um, you know, coming up towards the 200 day line. We kind of bought a little bit early. Um, we were taking profits once we hit three percent. Uh, we took our first third of profit just to lock some in. And again, it's, you know, you might say, well, gosh, you know, if you're if you're taking profits that quickly, how are you ever going to make that much money? Hey, we're just we're just trying to make a little bit here, a little bit there. Mm -hmm. And 
um, when a bunt, was, you know, <laughs> right, a bunt, exactly. <laughs> uh, to put it back into the sports terms, but you know, once this started coming down, um, we did give it a little extra room because we were we were going to see if it got support at the ten day. It came right to that level yesterday, but then as we saw it break, you know, lower today, um, we ended up taking a loss on the trade. But the fact that we took some profits. Uh, earlier mm -hmm. did make it a smaller loss. So again, this is really about minimizing losses as much as you can and not swinging for the fences, doing those bunts uh, so that you can, uh, you know, make a little progress. But the, the big thing is you don't have to be doing it with a lot of money. You can be doing it with smaller positions. You know, the risk is higher right yes. now. So to protect your portfolio, you know, instead when the, when the risk gets higher, the thing you can do to adjust is have smaller position sizes. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Okay, well, let's end the show on a little bit more of a positive note. The medical sector, as you said, has been uh, the most fertile ground for potential watch list names. So here's a look at Neurocrine Biosciences NBIX. It's a biotech name, and it looks like that a uh, round number at 100 is priming up to be the resistance level that we're keying off of. However, we also have really emphasized lately how buying on pullbacks to key moving averages versus breakouts and, and that strength is something that you need to be looking at. So, so what level would you be looking at for NBIX here, Justin? Well, so right now we've pulled back to the 21-day line. Um, even a pullback to the 50-day line wouldn't be out of the question here. Um, and so if you think about it, um, let, let's say let's say it bounced right here. Well, you know, at 95.30, you know, that move up to 100. If you waited to 100 and bought there as it as it went through there, uh, that would be your kind of traditional area, mm -hmm. right? But if you were buying it a little bit earlier off of this pullback, you know, showing strength, um, you know, off of the off of the 21 day line, you could be looking at 95, 96. Let's say it comes down to the 50 day line, you could be looking at maybe 92 or 93 that you'd be getting into this. And so just think about how much cushion you would have on this once it gets up to 100, once it gets up to that level of resistance. So you've got some options mm -hmm. at that point. Hey, I can take some profits, you know, yep. on the way up here. Um, if it blows through that, I can hold the position, give it some more room. But if it starts wiggling and wobbling around there, you, number one, have that cushion. So you've already got like, you know, 4%, 5% or more profit. And that just allows you to have a little bit more flexibility in how you handle your position. So um, as you said, you know, breakouts are kind of not where it's at right now. Uh, pullbacks can offer more opportunities. The other thing I like about them is you've got a very quick way in order to mm -hmm. cut your loss. You know, if this yep. gets to the moving average line, bounces, but if it fails, then gosh, if it goes right below that you know, moving average line again, you can just sell. And a lot mm -hmm. of times that will keep your loss down to, you know, a 3% or less. And again, this is, this is about protecting your capital. So I, I really like the pullbacks in this, in this time frame mm -hmm. um, and environment right now. So one other thing I want to just say about NBIX is look at the way that it had this big move down from 100, um, you know, down below 80, you know, it rallied up, didn't quite get up to that 100 level, but then look at the next move down, much, much less, okay? And the market was coming down, making new lows. This wasn't. And then it came up again, the move down, much, much less. So I feel like if we can hang above this 200-day line, the 90 level, um, and, and that previous low, then this is kind of changing its character into something mm. that's getting tighter and tighter. And that's the kind of action we want to see. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many stocks out there that are just getting more and more volatile. That can yep. be tough to play. But when you see the tighter action, that's mm -hmm. something that can tell you, hey, there's there's some stealth accumulation going on here and support. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned a potential change in character. Can we put that in the context of what you're seeing on the weekly chart here? Yeah, so I mean, th this is this is a stock that hasn't really done much, but let's go ahead and take a look at the big picture and look at XBI. Uh, this is one that we've been talking about. This is an ETF again that you know this has been in a major downtrend mm -hmm. for a while here, um, and we've been talking about how if you go and draw the line 
kind of back at this level of support just above 60, well, you can hit a couple levels here. You know, there's a level back in COVID. There's a level back in our bear market in 2018. So the fact that uh, NBIX has kind of a similar thing where it's it's got some levels there of support, but also going for it is the fact that, you know, compared to the market and compared to even its sector, XBI, it's not coming down nearly as much. So there is some relative strength there relative to the market and relative mm-hmm. to its peers. Mm-hmm. And unlike something like Post, you can look at this monthly chart and you can see those periods <laughs> of outperformance. Yeah. So uh, even though the relative strength line is off highs now, and we're pointing out that uh, you know shorter term relative strength, it does have past periods where it can really rock and roll. Yeah. You're not really going to get that with Post. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you're, you're pointing out two areas uh, from 2017, you had a double. Um, yeah. And from the 2014 level, I mean, it was it, it was it was much more than double. So I mean, that's, that's not something you're going to see in post, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is why we look at all the different time frames, right? Uh, because mm-hmm. it really adds to the analysis, you can't you can't just look at one time frame and and be done with it. Maybe you can lean on a particular time frame to uh, dial in your your buy and sell decisions, but in that initial analysis, I think it's really critical to look at those different time frames. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to understand someone's personality, how much more uh, beneficial is it to kind of get a long term history on them, right? You know, what was their childhood yeah. like, um, as opposed to you know just just a single action that they take. Mm-hmm. So true, Justin. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. We'll be back with more tomorrow morning on IEBD Live. And we hope you join us there. It's our daily morning live stream where we're talking about portfolio management strategies, trade ideas, overall market conditions, and what our team is seeing in real time. So join us, investors.com slash IEBD Live for all the details on that. We'll see you there. And Justin, you've got the podcast tomorrow. So looking forward to that later this week. And then on Friday, we have Ryan Pierpont returning to IBD Live. He had back-to-back top three finishes in the U.S. Investing Championship. He's a swing trader. So it'll be good to get an update from him on some of the setups he has his eye on. He's a great follow on Twitter. He likes posting charts of setups he's looking at. So it'll be great to dig in with him on Friday. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you back here tomorrow.